Hey, this is Charlie. Welcome to Domestic Rockstar. Today, I want to introduce you to my friend Carver from the local Las Vegas band Dim. We'll be talking about the history of the band, the places that they are now, and some influences that they have of other bands that they're inspired by. So welcome, Carver, thank you for joining me. Um, first, I wanted you to give a little history about the band Dim. Um, you guys are based here in Las Vegas, yeah. and you've been a band for almost 11 years, correct? Or correct. Or 11 yeah, years this year? We just celebrated uh, 10 years in February. Oh, okay, great. And I was actually at the 10 year anniversary show at House of Blues, which was awesome. Good times. And um, it was great. Uh, but how did you get into Dim? Uh, I was a fan, um, so I was that guy at the front of the stage just constantly uh, screaming, you know, into the mic whenever uh, Wes gave it to me. Um, so uh, eventually came this point where Darkstar, the DJ, and he also did the keys and samples and backing vocals, um, he, uh, he couldn't make a show. And uh, they need somebody to fill in. So, um, you know, I was talking to Wes and I made some off comment because he was having some trouble with other members of the band. And, uh, you know, just made some off comment. Well, if I could play an instrument, I would totally be in a band with you, bro. And uh, he was like, wait, you know the songs? You should come, you know, do some, some vocals with me. And uh, so... That's where it started, and now I'm here. <laughs> awesome. So you've been in the band for nine years? Uh, 2009, so... Oh, okay, so about seven, seven years. Seven about years. About seven years. Okay, awesome. And your role is you do secondary vocals. I don't want to say backing vocals, because you guys kind of work together. Yeah. So you do secondary vocals and keyboards and samples? Yeah, I guess you could say I do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've actually known each other since we first moved into this scene, which was about eight years ago. Um, so you weren't quite in DIM yet when we first moved here in 2008. Right. So it was like the following year that we started really playing shows with you guys and you were part of the band and everything. So um, basically, I want to know where you guys are at now, what your current goals are, what you're working on. We are currently writing our next album. Um... We have no idea where we're going to record it or who's going to produce it. We just know that we are, oh, I'd say about six songs deep, you know, um, with tons of other songs on the board, you know, ideas just flowing. Um, we've been kind of cutting back on our shows here and there. We we tend to keep, like, a pretty heavy schedule, which works for and against us, as you know yeah. how that works. <laughs> You try to keep your name relevant, but at the same time, you're just killing yourself. <laughs> um, so, we're working on that. Also, some ideas for merch. Um, we're also trying to branch out and look at some shows in California. Possibly reach out to some contacts in Arizona. Um, we're trying to do the gathering again. If it, if it ends up in Colorado like they claim it might, you know, that's still up in the air. But okay, so talk a little bit about that. So a few years ago, you guys got to play the Gathering of the Juggalos, correct? Yes, we drove all the way out to Ohio, like straight through. We didn't even stop, just just took turns. Um, it, was a, it, was, it was an interesting trip. I mean, I like to, you know, identify as a juggalo, but, like, I think that was a little bit much juggalo for me. <laughs> now, I am i don't identify myself as a juggalo at all. I'm not a fan, but I know a lot of my friends that are in metal bands or other hard rock bands are. Um, I just, it's weird. It's like a stigma. I, I had this boyfriend once when I was, like, 17, and I seriously broke up with him because he was a juggalo. Because he was a juggalo? Yeah, I couldn't do it. Wow. <laughs> But, uh, look, I have friends that are juggalos. I have nothing against them. I don't think that any of the people that I associate with are as far fetch a juggalo as some of the extreme cases and the craziness that you hear of lately. Like, I think there was just a recent story of a guy 
and his juggalo girlfriend that put on the makeup and then did a bunch of drugs and tried to eat each other's faces. So. Well, you know, there are retarded assholes in every group, so. <laughs> true, true. There's retarded assholes everywhere. Oh, the world. Um, so, uh, also, I wanted to know a little bit about uh, the bands that you're into. Um, you, being in the scene here in Vegas, what are some of your favorite local bands and some of the bands that maybe aren't around anymore that you wished were still around? Well, not to kiss ass, I love you guys. Right? <laughs> um, I actually, you know, I do a song with them like pretty regularly on stage. Um, to think of bands that aren't around anymore, I you know I'm sad that Rule of Thumb split up. Oh yes. Um, yes. I mean obviously Kenny had to move on. Um, you know, <sighs> Broken End was something that I was into. Twenty One Strong was probably like my favorite of all the uh, local groups. I, I don't want to say that they're broken up so much as like um, they're just not like a full time. Thing anymore. Yeah. You know? like They're they do, not regular. Yeah, they do stuff here and there. Um, let's see, I miss like, you know, stuff like Ignorance to Bliss, uh, Temper, yeah. I don't think I'd heard of either one of those. They might have been dissolved. Those are all, yeah, those are all like old scene stuff. So besides my band, what other like current local bands, not even just in Vegas, but in general, are you into? Um, well, Guilty being one of those guys that Tool is my absolute, like, be-all, end-all, you know, favorite band. Um, you know, going old school, Typo Negative, and, you know, Pantera. Um, I'm really into a lot of, like, the, like, melodic stuff. If I was going to go with a newer band, though, like, Gemini Syndrome is probably one of my absolute favorites. Not just because I know some, you know, guys in the band, I met them because I became a fan of the band. That's so. awesome. It seems like your whole like focus into being in a band and then how your influence is based on bands that you're fans of, which is awesome. Because being a fan and getting to create a passion, like turn your, your fandom into a passion in a band and then meeting other bands is always great. Right. When I was doing my magazine in California, I got to meet a lot of bands that I was fans of, which was awesome. Um, but this is also another reason why I brought you on, is I wanted you to give us a review of the recently released Gemini Syndrome album, Memento Mori. <sighs> Memento Mori. Uh, what, what can't be said? Um, Alright, let's start here. This album is layers and layers of beautiful well-placed harmonies, uh, great vocal swells, lots of just fantastic cleans. I mean, Aaron is a fantastic singer, and I mean, all the way from the EP, but like, he has just built his voice so much coming along the way. Um, this album is dark, but it has a very, a very positive ring to it. Uh, it's, you know, there's a focus around death and the need to really kind of focus on the fact that you are alive and not waste that time. Um, the instrumentation, you know, it it doesn't get super technical, but at the same time, there are a lot of flair in certain spots. You know, the guitars are crisp, the bass is just, just you know, rings very well, and Brian on the drums, he's, he has a style that, I mean, I, if you've ever seen him, his drum set's flat. He has a style that I I don't see in many drummers. And uh, it, it, the, the percussion is very, very well done. The, the Churcos did fantastic on the production. And the mixing of this album, there's... I can't... I, I have not taken it out of... My CD player, or I should say, my I haven't stopped playing it on my iPod. That's awesome. I have literally listened to it every day since it's come out because the lyrical content is so relatable in all facets of life between dealing with people that, you know, some of us can't stand to dealing with loss to, you know, dealing with thinking you are an absolute horrible, like, like you are scum, but you're not, like, dealing with that. There's also dealing with um, 
depression on the album. It's it really covers all facets of life and going if you're especially if you're going through some stuff like I've been this year, it uh it really keeps you from from taking a plunge. That's awesome. So what is your favorite track on the Uh I actually have two. Um Gravedigger, which AP and Brian carry that song with that bass and those drums. It you know, it's it's a very, very dark song about a dark time. And then Brought to Light, which closes the album out, which I relate with very strongly about the fact of, you know, being at a low point and kind of trusting yourself and your demons with your demons and then uh, kind of coming out on, on a brighter side. Well, that's awesome. And because you know them personally, does it have more of an effect on you emotionally? Well, I know Aaron. Um, I mean, it, it. I think I'd feel that way anyway, but the fact that I know him and where he, where he comes from, and I kind of, it kind of makes me feel like he understands me as a person, you know? And so hearing it, Hearing him sing, it almost feels like sometimes he's he's singing straight to me. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So check them out online. Again, that is Gemini Syndrome, and the album is Memento Mori. They are going to be playing in Las Vegas October 24th with Seven Dust and Red Sun Rising, and you can check them out on GeminiSyndrome.com. Now, to move on to some other recent um, events that have happened, um, Dillinger Escape Plan just released their newest and last album, Disassociation, which breaks my heart, but it just came out um, like two days ago. And the whole album lyrically and musically feels like a culmination, like a closure for the band. Um, they're one of my biggest influences, but um, most of the lyrics and most of the way that it flows together seems like it's like the end. Like it feels like Greg wrote a lot about their relationship and it coming to a close. So there is some closure there, but it still it still breaks my heart that they're that they're done. But I do get to see them again on the 29th of this month. They're playing at Beauty Bar, so that should be awesome. Last time they played there, they ripped the place apart. It was great. <laughs> I love it. So yes, so Dillinger Escape Plan played the beauty bar last year. They're playing there again this year on the 29th and last time they were here they ripped it apart. It was awesome. Hopefully uh, they'll do the same thing. I'm sure they will, if not more. I think there's a picture, I have it online, um, on my Instagram of Greg like jumping 20 feet in the air off of the giant monitors into the crowd. They just don't give a flying crap. Um, but yeah, so Dillinger Escape Plan, new album, disassociation available online, all outlets. They even have bundle packs with vinyl if you're into that stuff. Um, and then my friends Death Valley High just released a video for Warm Bodies. They're amazing, progressive, techno rock kind of goth really awesome guys really great music um you can check it out on youtube i'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out um and again they're amazing good friends of ours um their their music is pretty great there's a lot of really good hooks like vocally i think you you dig it as a vocalist too reka does an amazing job um and then also uh i didn't I didn't really talk about this on the last or the first episode, but Norma Jean released a new album and it's called Polar Similar. And I gave a little bit of a review before, but since it's been a few weeks since I filmed that first episode and that album is amazing. It, like Gemini Syndrome to you, it has not left my player. I'm listening to it every day. It's always great when an album does that. <laughs> yes, and it's like, as a musician, like, as you hear it, you get into it, you and then all these layers just start to unfold as you listen to it more and more, and it just touches you even more. It has a bigger impact on you more as you listen to it, which is great. And for musicians that are creating albums like that, like, it's amazing. I hope this next album that we're working on touches people like that in just a little bit. So thank you for watching. Um, if you like the video, click the thumbs up and subscribe. You can check out Gemini Syndrome at GeminiSyndrome.com and you can check out Dem at... You can see all, us and all of our sweaty painted glory at DeathInMotion.com. Thank you.